Hello, my name is Vesal, and similar to the previous presentation, this is about also shamans and drums somehow, but um, this is more of a case study with a person who I have encountered before, and um, she performed a similar, I'm not going to say similar, but a ritual that is also shaman, but in the Andes of South America. When I asked her about what the ritual is and the connection about it, she answered me some few questions I will tell you as we go with this presentation. So, um, the, the ritual is called despacho. Again, it has, she, what she said, that it has almost nothing to do with shamans in Scandinavia or in this area. But I will tell you later on what, my, what I think the connection is. Um, so the despacho is basically, um, you start a despacho with, a, with natural elements, uh, flowers, petals of flowers, and a bay leaf. The, flowers, uh, the petals of the flowers represent, male, the white one represents the male, male energy, and the red one represents the female energy. So this is what a despacho looks like. As you can see, it's very beautiful. It's one of the most captivating thing I've gone through. This was also performed in a group where I was present. I'm not gonna go through it because we don't have a lot of time, but as you can see, I was mesmerized on how beautiful it looked and how artistic it looked. Uh, this is the case study. Her name is Michelle Karen. Michelle Karen is a Finnish a, a woman from uh, Finland, but she has lived all her life in uh, France. So when you see her speak, she's going to have a French accent, but she is actually from Finland. Her name is Michelle Karen, and she performs a lot of rituals that have to do with shamans and what I call uh, a modern shaman. So this is what she explained uh, what a despacho is in her belief. So a dispatcho is an offering, it means an offering, and there are about 144 types of dispatchos. So there are dispatchos, the one you attended was an I need dispatcho, which means um, uh, an offering to Pachamama, Mother Earth, the apples, the mountains, um, to bring, to come in right relationship with everything in our lives. This is the concept of Aini, which is in the, for the Kiros who initiated me, that's the concept of reciprocity. We receive, we give back, and we come in right alignment with everything in our lives. People, situations, a, a country, money, different things. And um, actually, a dispatcho, uh, but there are different kinds of dispatchos because you can also do a dispatcho where you release all the things you no longer want in your life. That's called a kuti dispatcho. And there you would put all the bad things, not good things. Uh, you can do a, an aya dispatcho. An aya dispatcho is for a person when they died and to allow the soul or help the soul go through all the world uh, until they are able to reach enlightenment on the other side. Um, and you can do a dispatcho for anything, you know, for a coming, you know, birth of a child or a beginning of a project. But a dispatcho is really, uh, indeed, it is very beautiful because it is made with uh, a white paper that's the envelope of dreams and that is divided in nine. So there's one part for the world, one part for the middle world, one part for the upper world, one part from past, present and future. And there is a lot of sweetness, there's a lot of sugar in this one. And there's about 99 different ingredients that go into the, the performance of that ceremony that each symbolize traditionally a certain aspect of life of our lives and also of life in general. So we don't put just our prayers that we blow in kintus that are made traditionally with coca leaves and red and white petals of carnations. So the red is a symbol of Pachamama, the blood, and the white is a symbol of uh, the apus, the mountains, father sky, which is also connects uh, with semen, so it's the masculine and feminine, red and white.
and um, and then we put them. We put three bay leaves or four, depending. Three that connect to the apples, four that connect to Bachelama, and we put them on our third eye with the two petals, and then pray, uh, focus on our prayer, and then blow. Second, blow, and we keep going like this until we have all our prayers and we put them in the dispatch room. And then the shaman will add all sorts of things on top of that, so it's performed, it's created, it's done sometimes. I like to do them in a circle. My teacher, uh, Don Pasquale, likes to do it in um, like a, a diamond shape. Um, it doesn't matter, but it is balanced indeed, because there's always a balance of the masculine and the feminine, of the upper and what is above, what is below. So what is inside, what is outside, it's always a balance. And then we put other things, other I. Okay, so uh, as I said, um, Michelle Karen is a person who has been also initiated in the Andes in South America, so she knows a lot about the dispatcho. But when I asked her what the connection was, there, she said there's probably very little connection. However, Michelle Karen performs a lot of other um, rituals that are also around the world. She travels around the world. But it was, it's very interesting how she explained these rituals as a combination. So she has her rituals from Finland, she has her rituals from her Nordic uh, um, origin, but she has been initiated in the Andes in Peru, and that is all, all, all a mixture, and that is by definition what she calls herself, um, like what we agreed on what a modern shaman is. So to connect this to our um, course, I took uh, this one class, I'm not sure if any of you went to um, Francis Joy, he talked about the drums and what I found interesting, uh, the connection, uh, of course her drum is authentic, of course, that goes without saying, uh, it is a real um, a drum. The interesting thing, if you've been to those, uh, if, that, uh, if you've been to that class, uh, Francis Joy explains how these symbols represent uh, history and represent um, knowledge, but what Michelle Karen was showing me that it's also a, a shield. So the drum is also a shield, but what's most interesting is right here, she explains how it is a boat. A boat that takes her to a different, um, to the different worlds. And what's interesting when I took the, the class is that I learned that a lot of uh, drawings and symbols are placed next to bodies of water, not by chance, but because the shamans and the Sami believe that this is how you travel to the other worlds, through being next to the water. And when she was explaining that the drum is also a boat that goes through uh, different worlds and helps her to transcend to other worlds, I found that very interesting that she had that, she knew the resemblance of water uh, or, or the drum playing the role of a, uh, of, a, of a boat and knowing how important the bodies of water are for sh shamans and Sami people, uh, especially if you look into the drawings and how, how they are very much connected to lakes and rivers and seas. So that was about the... Finally, I asked her about what a modern shaman is. Uh, okay, so I have just like one minute if I can play that and then, I'm, then we're done. I think I do. Um, I, I, I don't think it's unconscious because consciously I, I honor the tradition. I honor um, everything I received from my own teachers, the Karos. I added my own things because they told me to and they said that I had to do my ceremonies. They had to be my ceremonies and not a copy of what they taught me. I added things of um, my own tradition from uh, Finland, which uh, the clothing, the drum, the rattles, you know, there are some things that are not typically at all South American that I added. Um, and I believe that the shaman should be part of his world and his society. So I also add, you know, elements in my dispatchals that relate to modern life, that relate to the challenges we have. Uh, recently I started adding things about the 
the women and men and children because you know there's a lot of civilizations right now that are not respecting uh, women very well. There are a lot of men who are trying to evolve and are having a hard time getting out of the traditional role of being a breadwinner and strong and all of that and never crying. And a lot of children who are left on their own and don't have parents and don't. Okay, so that's it for my presentation. Um, hope you uh, got a few information from it.